Hi everyone. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about populations and communities. Remember that a population is referring to a specific species in a given area at a particular time. And a community is referring to not just one population, but many different species, many different populations living in the same area that are interacting with each other. And what we're going to take a look at is the changes in the population or the populations and the community over time. And that is what is referred to as succession or ecological succession. And as we'll see, there is a particular pattern or sequence that these changes do follow. And we usually talk about these changes taking place when there is some sort of a disturbance. And we'll talk about what a number of those different disturbances are. So change in population numbers are going to take place over time. But as we'll see, it's not just the fluctuations in the numbers for a given population. It's a change within the species that we find within that community that are going to change over time as well. So one population, the numbers might go up. And for another population, those numbers might go down. One population might replace another population in this process of succession. Two different kinds of succession, primary and secondary succession. So starting off with primary succession, this really is the key. Whenever your starting point is, there is no soil that is present. In other words, for the most part, what we're talking about is bare rock. If there is bare rock, there is no soil. And that's really the key as to whether it is primary succession or the other one that we'll talk about later, which is secondary succession. So what sort of situation could we have within an ecosystem where there is no soil? What sort of a disturbance might there be that would create an environment where there's no soil to start with for vegetation to grow? So a few classic examples. This is definitely one here. This is the Athabasca Glacier in Jasper Nas National Park, a part of the Columbia Ice Fields. And um, what it does have in this picture here, we can take a look at this date. So what this is showing, 1992, that's where the tongue of the Athabasca Glacier was in 1992. So if we were to go further back in this picture, we would go further back in time and the glacier would be further down this valley. So what we do say is that the glacier is retreating. And what we find is that it's not just here with the Athabasca Glacier. It is pretty, pretty much all glaciers around the world. That is exactly what is taking place is they are retreating. But if we take a look at what is left behind, notice that there is no vegetation that is growing here. There is no soil that we have here. What we have is bare rock. So because there is bare rock, this is our starting point. Very, very few things can actually grow directly on the bare rock. So this would be, again, sort of a classic example of primary succession. So a couple other ones that we'll take a look at here. This is um, another Alberta example in southern Alberta, the Crow's Nest Pass. This goes back to 1903, this mountain here, Turtle Mountain. Well, about half of it slid down in the middle of the night. And this is what we refer to as Frank Slide. So at the bottom here, all the rubble that we see at the bottom, again, that is bare rock. All the way down the slope here, that is bare rock. So major, major disturbance. Here there is no soil again in any way whatsoever. So a rock slide like we see here, this is another example of primary succession. There might be a landslide, and if there's a landslide where there is still soil, that would not be primary succession. But if there's bare rock, as there clearly is in this example, that would also be an example of primary succession. Third example that I have here, this is um, on the big island of Hawaii, which is the Kilauea volcano, active volcano. This one here is a picture from 2017. And what we can see all over here, in fact, is this black lava. And we can see the lava right here that is flowing into the Pacific Ocean. So for sure, the lava field that we see here, the solidified lava, this is bare rock and nothing but bare rock. Once again, very, very little can grow on this. So that's why this is also an example of primary succession. A couple of other examples that I don't have pictures of. We could have a dry creek bed. So the creek could be diverted. It goes down a different channel. And if it were a creek bed that is rocky, that again would be another example of primary succession. 
So the picture that we're taking a look at here kind of takes us through the actual well succession process that's taking place. So this is the beginning on the left hand side and it's primary because again what we have here is just the bare rock and again that is really what you do want to focus on when you're distinguishing between primary succession that we're talking about right now and secondary succession. This is in the boreal forest so like we do have in uh, northern Canada, northern Europe, northern Asia, circumpolar, all around the northern hemisphere. So if we did have one of those events described that I that I, we just saw for primary succession, for example, in the boreal forest, we certainly could have something like a rock slide, like Frank slide, where we just have the bare rock. So then we go through these sequence of changes, and these changes can take a long period of time. Depending upon the environment, in some environments it takes much, much longer than others, than others, but especially in cold environments, colder environments like the boreal forest. So this process going from bare rock to eventually having a mature forest over here, which is what we call, as we will see, the climax community, that sort of thing might take hundreds and hundreds of years to go through this sequence of succession. So in terms of the initial vegetation, Again, very, very little it can actually grow on the rock, uh, but these can't. So lichen, and that's what this picture is showing at the bottom here. This is lichen. So lichen is a combination of an algae and a fungal species that have a symbiotic relationship. So they can grow, well, they can grow on trees, but they can also grow directly on rock. And when they do that, eventually they do release some chemicals that leads to the chemical breakdown of the rock. Over time, there's physical breakdown of the rock. And eventually we get, sooner or later, and again, depending upon the environment, um, and that will determine how long it takes, but initially at least we get a little bit of soil very little soil. But once there is a little bit of soil, now we can have some very, very small plants that start to grow. So that would be things like the mosses. So as the lichen, as the mosses, they grow, they die, they decompose, what that is going to do is add to the soil. So as we go in this direction here, what we get is more soil. It doesn't exactly show it on the picture here. We'll see it on another picture, but generally the pattern that we see is the soil is going to get thicker and thicker over time as we go through this succession process. So over here, this would be at the start, and over here would be sometime later as we go through the succession. So the next vegetation that we might see are grasses, uh, low-lying shrubbery, again, the same thing they start to grow, they die, they decompose, and in doing so, they're also changing the environment a little bit through this process of succession. They're changing the environment in the sense that, remember, there was no soil, and now there is some soil. So even though we're going to be talking about changes in the populations and the communities, so initially we have the lichen and the mosses, then it's replaced by the grasses, then it's replaced by the shrubs. So it's kind of a replacement process a lot of the time with succession. But that's also because of some changes in the abiotic conditions that are taking place as we do have new species, new populations that gradually start to replace the other ones. So it has on here primary succession, and I'll also just point out um, that it does have secondary succession. And notice that the bar for primary succession, it is starting right at the beginning with the bare rock. And this is the distinction between primary and secondary, is with secondary succession, we do have some soil. Soil is present. So this might be a little bit misleading here. I kind of have that right where I have little soil. In fact, there might be a significant amount of soil where we do have secondary succession, a significant amount of soil to begin with in the first place. So we see for going from left to right, we get more and more soil. What we also see is the size of the vegetation that it's showing here, it gets bigger. So here, very, very small. Mosses, really the smallest of the plants that we're going to get. And as we go further and further to the right-hand side, we get things that are progressively bigger. So in terms of replacement, um, what we do have at the beginning here, these are what are referred to as the pioneer species. They're the initial ones that come in after a disturbance. 
Some disturbances will lead to primary succession. Other ones, we can start right away with secondary succession. But the first ones that begin to grow after that succession are what we call the pioneer species. The ones that we get kind of at the end of the succession process, the bigger ones that we see here, it is referred to as the climax species or the climax populations or the climax community that we do see. And even though it's kind of a replacement, if we do take a look in the climax community, notice that it's not just these big trees here, which would be spruce trees that we would find in the climax community of the boreal forest, but there are still some of the understory vegetation as well. So there will still be, of course, some moss, there will be some grass, there will be some low shrubs, but much of that has been replaced and is now being shaded out by the larger trees that we see here. And again, in the boreal forest, that's primarily the black spruce that we would be talking about. So secondary succession, um, key thing here, once again, is the soil. Now the soil does remain. So this is the classic example for sure of secondary succession. There could be other ones that destroy all of the vegetation but leave the soil behind. So that might be from another form of flood. It might be from a hurricane. It might be from a tornado. It might be from, as we will see, some human interventions as well. But what we do have is soil that is remaining. In both of these pictures, there was a fire. In the one on the left-hand side, you can see this sort of patchwork here where there is still some vegetation that is growing around and other regions that have been burned. And that's just the nature of forest fires. There's no real predictable pattern in terms of what segments of the forest are going to be destroyed. On the right-hand side, we can see that most of the vegetation, it is now gone. But what we still have for sure is soil. And this makes it much, much, much more easier for vegetation to come back and return. So whereas with primary succession, it might be tens or much longer than that to get something like the grasses and the small shrubs. In the case of secondary succession after something like a fire, it might just be a couple of years and then some of the lower vegetation, the smaller vegetation uh, can already start to grow. So yeah, these were a couple of the other examples that I mentioned. So flooding for sure, it might destroy most or all of the vegetation. But once that water does recede, what is left is typically not bare rock, but there is some soil that does remain. So that would also lead to secondary succession. And uh, this is the human intervention. So for sure, logging, deforestation kind of accomplishes a similar goal in many ways to what we would see with a forest fire. So instead of the forest burning, the forest is well physically removed through the logging, but what is left behind um, is going to be the soil. It might be compacted because of all of the equipment that they do have, but there is soil that does still remain after logging does take place. So this picture here is uh, very similar that we are taking a look at. This one is not the boreal forest, but by taking a look at some of the mature species here, this looks like it would be a deciduous forest like we might find in eastern Canada or the eastern part of the United States. So this is our uh, secondary succession event or disturbance. That is the fire. And this one is kind of nice because it shows the time scale. So what do we get early on really, really quickly? In fact, even one year after the disturbance, things do start to grow. The grasses start to grow. The flowers start to grow. And again, it depends a little bit on the environment, the amount of precipitation, what the temperature is. That'll determine how quick it does take place. But here we can see yeah, after one year, we have some plants that are growing. Three or four years, we have the grasses, we have some larger plants. It still takes a fairly significant amount of time. So here it has it as greater than 150 years in order to reach what it does have labeled here as our climax community. And again, over on the left-hand side, this would be our pioneer community. So in this case, we don't necessarily have to have the lichen and the mosses that are coming in first as the pioneer species because it's not bare rock that we're dealing with. There is a little bit of soil. Um, but what's also a little bit misleading about this, so I drew a picture on the previous one that kind of showed this, which is the amount of soil. So if there is a fire, I did say it doesn't really destroy the soil. So it kind of gives the impression here that maybe we get more soil over time 
and there's less soil at the bin beginning. But I think we need to take a look down at this level here, and we can see that already there is a significant amount of soil. So this is not what it's going to be looking like in terms of the soil for secondary succession. We can maybe draw it looking a little bit more like this, where we still do have a lot of soil even at the start here. And the final slide that I have, just a couple of the additional terms that I did already define. So we have succession, a change in the community and the populations that take place over time. We have primary succession, no soil. We have secondary succession, soil does remain. The initial populations, the community that initially comes into that area after the disturbance is the pioneer community. And the one that we get later on, the more mature community, that is what is referred to as the climax community.